everybody. Welcome back to the Horn Hangouts. I hope you all had a good weekend. Um, it was lovely to hang out with you all on Friday. Thanks again to the Low Horn players. That was an incredible hangout. Today, we have got something completely different. We are welcoming truly one of the greatest horn players of all time. But for me, not only one of the greatest horn players, really uh, one of the greatest musicians. I had the privilege to sit next to him for quite a few years um, in the Berlin Philharmonic. And today is the first time we've done this sort of interview together. I've been trying for a long time and I'd like to welcome Radek Babarak. Well, Radek, so lovely to see you. <laughs> Hi, hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Yeah, they are watching exactly. from everywhere. And you have a lot of fans in Japan. I think it's like the middle of the night or something there. No, 11 o'clock. <laughs> what, what do they call you in Japan? Babo-chan? Yes, exactly. That's my nickname for Japan, Babo-chan. Yeah, actually, my name is quite long, Babo-rak. So, um, yeah. It was my nickname in the ground school, you know, Babo, Baba, so they call me everywhere like this. How, how old were you actually the first time you went to Japan? I remember you telling me the story about trying 14. to find 14. I was 14. Wow. But uh, the first big meeting with the uh, Japan Horn community was during the uh, uh, International Horn Society uh, meeting in Yamagata. Uh, I, I don't remember, maybe 16 or 17. And then uh, I met many, many Japanese horn players and we are still friends now. That's great. <laughs> it's a very special place for you, isn't it? Because yeah, they, they, exactly. it's, it's like your second home. And I remember you telling me as a 14 year old coming from, from Prague, which was still, you know, still sort of more or less the East Block. Um, it's, and, exactly. and, and you had to, you were confronted with sushi and sashimi and all this stuff. <laughs> it was a shock. <laughs> For the first time or second time, I was able to eat McDonald's only because nobody explained me how to eat uh, sushi or sashimi, how to combine all together. <laughs> and now? I was lost in Japan. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you grew up there. Really, you did. Radek, there are so many people writing on the chat saying to you, Julio from Santander in Spain, amateur shipping says, Dobrio Jen, Radek. Um, greetings oh. for Sri Lanka. Selena from Hamburg. Elliot from Sydney. Kevin from Kentucky says he has so many questions. Dylan and Ali, Annie and Henry from Los Angeles. Hura from um, Slovenia. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Great. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. And now, Radic, may I start with a question of my own? But I yes, think please. everybody wants to know the answer to this. How and why could you play with this mask? And while, while you explain, I'm just going to show a picture of Radic in this mask. Um, yeah, here. <laughs> uh -huh. Can you explain this picture, please? I don't see the picture, but... Oh, you don't uh, see the picture. Okay, I it's, the one, it's, uh, it's the one with it's you. The one. With the zipper with, mask and your hat. With the zip and the hat, yeah. yeah. The hat is a special thing. It was a cover for the bell, you know. Because uh, in the Czech, ah. the, during the Corona virus, the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra invite us, horn players, to join the TV concert. Yeah, this Now one. you can see it, yeah. And a uh, very uh, small company, from uh, East Czech, they produce a mask with a zip because, you know, there are village people playing brass bands, small brass bands during a uh, marriage, during a funeral, and they don't stop. Of course, they are not professionals, so they have to play. But uh, many people were scared, like, you know, you need to wear a mask during playing. Okay, how, how to do with a can zip? You, can you and see that, this one? Yeah. <laughs> this is the wind section for, uh, I think, uh, water music. Yes, wow. we use the same. Oh, yeah, it looks. But you had nice. a mask, you had a zip <laughs> here, so you yeah, could yeah. play. It was not so comfortable with this, but, uh, oh, yeah. To start off, I also thought, what are, you, made, you sent me a little video that you made um, with your uh -huh. colleagues from the Czech Philharmonie. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, you were saying something. What were you saying? Uh, it was the Horn Quartet. Yeah, it was playing... a video for actually Prague Chamber Philharmonia, Prague Philharmonia. 
I was, it was my first or orchestra, my first job with 17. So and now they are independent orchestra, you know, they are not supported uh, by state or city. So they really need the uh, support. Yeah. So, so then you may... A very, very short fanfare, Czech composer Mehura Quartet, one movement. Yeah. Shall we Just listen to it? Let's listen to it. Okay. Ah. Bravo! <laughs> oh, thank you. But you saw the three of them, they use the bell cover. We couldn't see that, but that, that's yeah, what we, yeah. Black, we, black, yeah. Black, black, yeah. But the, it sounded still pretty good. That's, that's the other question. What, yeah. Why this black cover and how does it, how is it like playing with it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, now uh, last week I saw Vienna Philharmonic did or Bamberg Symphony Orchestra some uh, I would say research so about yeah. uh, with the about, with the with the with yeah. the smell and the the sound. But uh, yeah. actually, those video was maybe one month or old, so without any, you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so they ask, please take something to cover the bells and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think now it's okay. We have to stay two meters yeah. apart when we play. That's the problem. So you were standing quite close together, but with mask and with it's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Radik, I posted the link. Um, the Musi Musi Kanten Viola Noha. The, okay. The link. Yeah. Thank you very much. It means uh, musician. We call in Czech a freelance musician. We call musician on free foot. Like Noha means foot. So Volny is free. So Frei Beruflich or the freelance musicians. So we created with my students and colleagues a small foundation, small fund to support them. Because especially my country is a disaster uh, if I compare to Germany. So the, you know, the culture in Germany was supported. Even your uh, new chief conductor, Maestro Petrenko, he took the, as a main person, with culture minister, you know, but uh, in my country was nothing, almost nothing. So we did this and um, yeah. Yeah, so we posted the link and if, if any of you can repost it during the Hangout, that would be great. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome. We want to know where you're watching from. But if you have any really juicy questions from Radic, please pop over to the website because the Facebook questions go, especially now because so many people are watching. Um, so I've got some great questions for you already, Radic. If we could just, 
I mean, your history, um, you can Google it, you can look it up. There's some great interviews with you. And, um, you know, the fact that you started really young and that your stepfather really drilled mm. you, huh? He, he, oh, you, yeah. It was like, people <laughs> say, what's the secret of your horn playing? I think that must have started as a very early age. Mm, I was eight, you know, after second teeth was a <laughs> stable because before I played recorder and piano as well. And then later I started with oboe for a very short time because my older sister is an oboe player, but then horn, yeah. And my stepfather was my first teacher. He was quite uh, obsessed, not only me, but uh, his horn class was crazy. You know, many, many professional good players still we are in touch. And uh, yeah, but uh, you but know, he, it he was did. a pressure, but uh, at the time, last century, my country was uh, in the East part, so communistic part. And his idea, his very strong idea was, you must escape from the communistic system to the West Europe. So to join normal life, normal musician and professional life, yeah. Yeah, and, but I think that was very valuable for you because what I, read, uh, what I read was that he didn't only drill you with the horn, you had to study scores and horn parts and ev everything to do with music. Yes, exactly. So the day was full of music. So every day I wake up at 6.15 and uh, the regime was like 15 minutes uh, bathroom, 15 minutes breakfast, one hour warm up. <laughs> And then school, it was just across the street, you know, five minutes from the house. And then immediately after the lunch, we went to the music school. It was actually the same building and we had uh, private lessons, so main lessons on. But after uh, late afternoon, chamber music, Monday was a uh, horn quartet, Tuesday uh, brass band, then wind quintet, then piano trio. So every day different ensemble and different style, not only classical. So also folks music, some uh, popular music, yeah. <laughs> and of course weekend, much more, so concentrated. <laughs> yeah, what was your weekend like then? If that was your yeah. week, what was your weekend, weekend like? It was a special, special lessons in his uh, country house, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. And that was from age eight, where other kids are like playing eight. football. Mm, no, no football. So no my, football. my city is especially very well known for ice hockey. But you know, ice hockey and horn. So again, the tease and the, yeah, it was too risky, too dangerous. So yeah. mm, would you, yeah, would it you... was my dream, but. Uh, <laughs> did the kids, did the other school kids think you were strange? Oh, I don't know. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my school kids. There's a nice question that's just come in from Joan. She said, how do you describe the Czech style of horn playing? Does it still exist? Mm, maybe these days, you know, the styles, German style, French style, Czech style, it's more one uh, style. But uh, uh, I remember our teachers also, my first teacher, second teacher, always care about horn quality and uh, and uh, his uh, advice was uh, singing, singing, espressivo, vibrato, again, singing, vibrato, espressivo, all the time. So not much technical problems, not, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, to to be very close to the human voice. That was the the final point, so. Do you think that that has something to do with how, how you play? Because in the years I sat next to you, I rarely heard you practice more than long notes, just beautiful legato, and mm -hmm. the rest you put into your music. And if do you think that if people really get, um, uh, feel at home with singing through the horn and making that beautiful espressivo sound, the problems maybe get less because they're making beautiful yes, music? Yes, I think so. So please follow singing. It's much easier so to, yeah. co to concentrate on music, on the phrase, not just uh, blow inside a tube, you know, so, but uh, yeah, be part of music. It's much easier to, to, to jump over the technical problems.
Yeah, here, here. I totally agree. Do you agree with that, everyone? I agree. Um, and Radek, you were just holding an online festival um, with a lot of Czech horn players. So if people want to know about the Czech style of horn playing nowadays, where can they go and look? Where can they find this? You can find it. Uh, we, we call it uh, Horn Fest Praha, Horn Fest Prague. It was the first year we did something because unfortunately the Czech horn school so we don't have enough students mm -hmm. and we try to support, to, to make a inspiration, to be inspiration for the young students to become professional horn players. So, but unfortunately this year was so special, but uh, you know, yeah. we will continue with the education this summer for small four or five days, uh, master class or workshops, but only for Czech, you know, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's wonderful, though, that you, you are so involved in, in, in promoting and supporting your own horn players at home, because, you know, most of us, myself included, are sort of into this big global thing. But you are very particular with your someone asked, I have to scroll back. There's so many. Um, uh, Mathieu asked, how did you create and come up with the idea of the Czech horn chorus? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, you know. I want to be with my friends. That's the first <laughs> reason. And we have very special friend, composer and arranger, Mr. Bock. He did many, many beautiful transcriptions, especially Anton Brockner music for us and the combination horn. So we don't call horn ensemble. If you remember our horn octet Berlin, we did so many arrangements by Klaus Wallendorf, yeah. for example, but difficult. No? Yeah. Difficult. Difficult, like <laughs> five or six, seven octaves, so high, low. But uh, uh, we try to to go another way. So the connection horn sound, uh, smooth horn sound, and uh, with organ. So this Beautiful. is the maybe I don't know. It's not a new way, but. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. Um, good morning from Panama, said Francisco. Good morning, Francisco, to Panama. We love knowing where you. Good morning and happy Memorial Day from Arizona in the USA, Vero Beach in Florida. Mark wants to know, how was the change from Czech wine to German, to German beer? Uh, Czech wine? <laughs> to German beer. When you moved from Czechoslovakia to, to, um, to, <laughs> to Germany. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> not so far, you know. Especially Czech... Uh, my first position was Munich Philharmonic. So, and then Czech uh, <clears throat> kitchen, Czech uh, food, Czech beer is so similar to Bavaria style, you know. Maybe different uh, taste, but it looks almost the same. Knedl beer, Bavaria size is big, no? One liter is <laughs> okay. half size, small country, small size. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, um, but whatever happened to your restaurant? Do you still have that restaurant? Is it still uh, open? I still Still have the idea of a uh -huh. small uh, hotel pension, you know, maybe. <laughs> in yeah, the because future. you wanted to be either an <laughs> ice hockey player or a, a chef or a cook. Exactly. You know, yeah. master cook. And you're a yeah. very good cook. Master I, cook. I, yeah. <laughs> um, the, 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 the things you cook are not really the things I can eat because in, it, you eat a lot of meat. <laughs> but there's a lot of good uh, dumplings and what else? What's the typical thing that it's you like? It's traditional, uh, traditional Czech, yeah, dumplings, uh, stuffed dumplings with uh, fruits, for example. Mm, that sounds good. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Next time. Last time I was in Prague, I, I loved it. I love Prague, but in the all the in in the, the the old town, all there is like pizzas and donuts and sausage, <laughs> and you can get all the food there that you can get everywhere else in the world. So it took us a while to find some typical Czech stuff. Difficult, yeah, on the periphery, not in the center. Okay, so if anyway, if you have, any of you go to Prague, you have to ask Radic where the super tips are. Okay. Um, Andrew Bain is watching from LA. Hello, Andrew. Good morning. We will see you later. Uh, Fred wants to know, Radic, who were your favorite horn players who influenced you as a student? You know, uh, the Czech, uh, Czech school, yeah. We have the, the Tilshar brothers, you know, we spoke one of them, Professor Bedrich Tilshar was my second teacher. So, and his brother was, uh, unfortunately, he died so a few years ago, but uh, he was uh, a legend. So, 
solo horn player of Czech Philharmonic Orchestra. Yeah. And then Hermann Bauman. Yeah. It was, did you uh, did you play for him or did he teach you or yeah, did you yeah. take master classes? Oh, I was a pr private student by Hermann and he opened for me something, a window. So. Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine because he yeah. was he was all about singing, all about the music, all about the the technical stuff. I remember I asked him a technical stuff, and he was like, once he's like, ah, just play the music, you know, and uh, yeah, exactly. more, yeah, yeah. Bless very good teacher. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very good teacher. Mm. Um, yeah, we've had a had a good uh, recommendation in the Czech Republic. You must go to Mariansky Lazny or Karlovy Vary. Okay. Mariansky Lazny is the oldest orchestra in Czech. It's a, it's a similar, like Baden-Baden, you know, spa, spa orchestra, spa okay. city. So beautiful, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, Radik, um, uh, there's another question that quite a few people are asking that I'll sort of try and make into a smaller question. You played 16 years as a principal horn before you were 40, which was it's quite a lot, you know, and mm -hmm. then you made this decision to um, leave horn playing. You've explained it all in interviews before, so we don't have to go all into that because you you wanted to expand. You wanted to do more conducting <coughs> um, and do more arranging. And has mm -hmm. it been has it been worth it for you to make that jump? Because there are not so many horn soloists <laughs> in the world There's you. There's Radovan. You know, it, it's not easy to make a living like that, but you wanted to become a different sort of, well, you were a different sort, you know what I mean, not a different sort of musician, but you wanted to go that different path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so after so many years in the orchestra, I was tired, you know, and, but I was full of, of uh, ideas, how the, or the first one to conduct, you know, to become conductor. So, and uh, many, many, ideas for chamber music to create uh, my ensemble yeah, and to combine the orchestra and family and the solo career of it's impossible for me. Mm. Yeah. Just two of them. Okay. <laughs> but family is the most important. Then second, what? Orchestra or to try to be freelance or you know. yeah. it's a uh, nice way a difficult way so but uh, full of adventure <laughs> yeah and your babarak ensemble are basically your wife and your friends <laughs> and yeah. you spend a lot of time yeah. with them which is fantastic we have uh, yeah many many combination the, the horn plus uh, string quartet but uh, then uh, bass clarinet and harp and piano and then we combine for piazzola of a crazy arrangement of Nino Rota movie music or Bolero or I don't know. So Bernstein, Gershwin. Yeah. Somebody's asked where but, can we get where can we get these these arrangements that you do? <laughs> also the ones on your CDs, you know, your many CDs. Yeah, yeah. They are not published now. Mm. Will they be? I keep I know I keep them for myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but we it's want them, we want them. To, to arrange, you know. Yeah, it's I a think. hard job and uh, if we publish, hmm, oh yeah, maybe we will share later. <laughs> okay. I think the Horn World will be very happy if, if you shared some of this later. That would be amazing. <laughs> um, uh, Radek Daniels asked, what do you practice every day? I want to know if you practice every day. And what does your daily routine consist of? Almost every day. And my daily routine is so boring, you know. I know your daily routine. <laughs> yeah. So I start low and I, I try to go up step by step yeah. Yeah, without pressure. <clears throat> you do a lot of long Sometimes notes. with time pressure, it's difficult. But mm -hmm. uh, if not, then I need 30, 40 minutes for myself yeah, to keep uh, condition. When we played together in Japan, in Sapporo, at the Pacific Music Festival last year, which was so fantastic, you were conducting the orchestra and the whole program. And I found it stressy enough just to be half a soloist, you know, but you were like having to play, conduct the orchestra, come back, play, conduct the overture at the beginning. And then, you know, is, is this, this is more fun for you. This is more of a is challenge. It, yeah, 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 yeah. I am used to combining, conducting, on playing. I know, for example, 
So to conduct the Beethoven Egmont Overture and then play some classical is difficult because it's, uh, Beethoven is so emotional, you know. Mm. Mm. And then to, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to cool down, it's difficult. So. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I am more smart now. So how yeah. to combine these two yeah. things? And uh, I feel very well. So I feel comfortable. Yeah. It was just unusual hearing a horn warm up coming from the conductor's room. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, we, we've got a lot of people watching. I mean, most, I think most of us are horn players and we love the, the really sort of horn playing exact, being exact things. Everyone wants to know. We're nerds, you know, horn playing nerds and we're proud of mm. it. So people are still wanting to know a little bit more about your routine. You, you start low, you go high, you avoid pressure. Um, mm -hmm. What, what sort of other little things would you, if you had 40 minutes for yourself, what would be your ideal way of spending it on the horn? Yeah, maybe 40 minutes is too much. Maybe okay, 20. 30. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 20 is enough. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, to be on stage is completely different uh, thing. So to practice home, to produce sound at home is completely different. So, uh, I never play f with a full sound, just mezzo piano or pianissimo or piano, very soft sound and uh, without energy. Like, uh, you know, I remember Eric Terwilliger, he's a guru, no, for the yoga and uh, so, good yeah. idea, so good style. And I can ab absolutely vouch for that. Practice, but relax. <laughs> Ad Radic really was like that. He was one of the most welcome guests in the horror room because we have young, the young academists come in and warm up like crazy wild yeah, yeah. animals. You know, they have to play every note of the horn mm. before we go on stage. Radic would just literally come in and do a few attacks, a few quiet things and, you know, relax before the concert. Mm. I was always very impressed. And I read the book, so during warm up or newspaper or something. So I don't watch a movie, but I am reading something. It's just for warm up. It's not yeah. a practicing. Maybe, yeah, yeah, it's a true. Some students, they do too difficult warm up. So too mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. You know, it's like a concentrated to the perfect and the most difficult warm up. And my advice will be to. Uh, warm up relaxing and then to practice more etude yeah. by Franz, by strauss by uh, you know clink everything coprash we know the which are your the favorites we want to know your favorite <laughs> studies all yeah all of them but not uh, yeah coprash is great for a simple technique right? simple yeah. but uh yeah. Wasn't there a Czech, uh, Kowski? Is, was that Kowski, Czech? Kowski, for example, yeah. yeah. I he like was, those. Uh, those are really good. Yeah, yeah, not bad. So he was composing, mm -hmm. no, some okay. etudes and pieces. Yeah. Some of them are funny. Yeah, I, I like them. They were, Fergus actually introduced me to them. I, 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 found, I found them, you know, in the lockdown days where we were going, all of us were going through all our music. I found uh -huh. those Kowski studies. Um, Radic, there's, a, there's another question with the, oh, so many people writing. It's amazing. Um, this is a more technical one by Christopher. Um, he said, you have said in a recent, in an earlier interview that your stepfather <laughs> always looked at your face and said it was suitable for yeah. horn. How, uh -huh. impor how important do you think the facial structure is to whether one should choose to play horn. Especially the lips are thin, you know, that was his, and the teeth are not uh, so. Uh, yeah. One okay. behind, so. Yeah. 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 You know. But thin lips, I don't have thin lips. Mm. Is it not good to have big lips? I think you are famous for uh, the best low player. Maybe, <laughs> so maybe more that lips is more for <laughs> this, maybe thin lips are more. But I'm not a special for high register, but... Uh, I, I'm sure someone, someone has done a study <laughs> about the lips uh, somewhere. Mm, um, maybe. <laughs> um, Heidi has asked from New York, she said, she can't believe no one has asked the mouthpiece question. Somebody always asks the mouthpiece question. So I'm mm. going to ask the mouthpiece question. Radic, what mouthpiece do you play on? I uh, Vincent Bach, number 10. You had to check it was, that, didn't you? It, it was, yeah. It was Vincent Bach number 11. I was very young. But then I changed to 10. Yeah. 
Your mouthpieces are just, if it works, play it, use it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have just one. So yeah. You only have much. one? What happens only if you lose it? Oh, dear. I have to okay. buy another one. <laughs> to buy a new I one. I hope it's the same. <laughs> Um, Alison says, once lockdown is over and concerts are back on, um, what solo performances or tours will you give? Because I saw on your website you should be now uh, on a tour, or in maybe in April it was, or May. Uh -huh. Was that uh, an, Amer an American tour? Next year. Ah, uh, next American year, okay. For okay. next year, but ah, this okay. year, yeah, so many cancellations, Paris, Tokyo, Berlin, so Prague, so everywhere, Germany, yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's sad. It's sad. Hi at home. <laughs> at home with the kids. Say hi to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> um, Fred would like to know what is your what are your favorite horn pieces to perform? See, I promised you it would be very horn technical today. Glier. Uh -huh. uh, Glier. Yes, I love Mozart more and more. Yeah, it's yes. probably the best. Yeah. Mozart number three, so third concerto. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Best. Actually, did you know your Mozart number three on YouTube has had like the most, it's got mil, um, at least a million views. Unbelievable. Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I no, was I, so happy. You know, this year, one of the last uh, concerts in January for Mozart birthday, it was my big debut with Vienna Philharmonic. I'm so happy, you know. I, yes. So I did uh, with Berlin and uh, number one, <laughs> Vienna number three. It's easy, no? It's Good. Easy. So we need two yeah. and four on the concert rondo to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hensa okay. said, Radic, please come on tour to New Zealand. So you've been invited With to New pleasure. Zealand. With pleasure. Yes. <laughs> um, we'll yeah, maybe. And Helmut says he heard you in Prague some years ago with your ensemble in the Mozarteum. There's a Mozarteum in Prague? Oh, yeah. There's yeah. A Mozarteum. It's oh. a small, beautiful architecture uh, house building. There's a Mozart theorem that, that, yeah, we have two. You know, Mozart was so happy in, in Prague. Yeah. And, uh, and we have Villa, Mozart Villa. So one of them, I, maybe. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, how was it with the Vienna Philharmonic? Baron Boyn was conducting, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, great. Was, yeah. Great. They, they have special sound, you know, the strings, so. Yeah. But but right. now that you usually when you play the horn in a concerto you conduct the first the, and so this yeah. time it, it was the first time in a while I mean was it easy to let Daniel do the work? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's easy. Yeah, yeah. He's a uh, good. Uh... <laughs> yeah, he's not bad. <laughs> he's not bad. Oh, I've got something really really technical for you today. Mm -hmm. um, Emily in Salzburg wants to know your number one tip for quiet entries without splitting the note. Your number one tip. Uh, number one, number one, uh, is a concentration before and uh, you know, uh, to follow the, the, the beat before you start. What is the most difficult uh, for this for me always was Bruckner for simple mm -hmm. you know? This one, huh? she's, yeah. she's asking so. Yeah. And then one and one and pa. So to, to <laughs> yeah. If you're lucky. A concentration and uh, yeah, it's so important. Yeah. But to be on time, exactly on time, not late, not before. Not That's late. hard in a German orchestra because German orchestras always play behind. Maybe, yeah. That's the th Sometimes in the same, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I agree. I think that's a very good tip with always feeling the metronome uh -huh. or inner metronome. And that can help with, with the tongue, with the, <laughs> because as you said, it's not about the technical, it's about the music and singing. And a singer would go, mm -hmm. la, you know, and basically, ta, we do the same. Yeah. But the problem is uh, the, the mouthpiece pressure, yeah. you know, mouthpiece pressure. And then the t tongue yeah. is also in a not free, you know, yeah. if it's low, it's always free, but yeah. If, yeah, maybe some Vienna horns, they use very special uh, without the tongue, no, just air. They do. Yeah, they do. Sometimes it's not. But their uh, instruments, their no. instruments are a little, uh, yeah. they're, they're very special to handle. They're not as big uh -huh. and as beefy as ours. You know, they, they're so light also to hold. If you pick them up, it's like, woof. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I don't know. 
Ah, anyway, okay, that's a great tip. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Helmut says, your orchestrina CD is so fantastic and full of life. What will you do next? Wonderful playing next and wonderful music. project uh, with orchestrina, it's cancelled. It was the <laughs> Wenstein and Gershwin project, big project. Unfortunately, maybe in two years, but because next year, you know, I love uh, Piazzolla music and I, I really like the new arrangements, new transcriptions for horn. I try to, to, to imitate. So Piazzolla bandoneon style on horn. How do you so do not that? Exactly, not exactly the same, but uh, you know, many, many jokes, many, yeah. But how do, you, how do you play the bandoneon with the horn? How? Uh, you know, the glissandi and the kind of improvisation, not too free, not like free jazz, but uh, yeah, ornamentic. So this kind of uh, makes something, me happy. Something <laughs> makes simple. Me happy. And <laughs> next year is a big celebration, uh, uh, 100th uh, birthday of Piazzolla. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I didn't know, but uh, He's born the same day I'm, so 11th March, so same day, birthday. It's not normal, no? No, that, that's a sign. It must be something. It's a yeah. sign. That's why you love Piazzolla. So and <laughs> one day we hope we'll have all your arrangements. So you have to. So the next, uh, yeah. next project will be again Piazzolla. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, good, 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 good. Can't wait for that. Um, Chiaki, I think from Japan, says, I heard that Babu Chan does not pull out any of the slides of the horn. Why is that? And how does he adjust, adjust the pitch? We see that in the photo of the page. On, on the page, they have your, your photo of you playing. I don't think we can. Can we see Moment. that here? No, we can't. Slides? Yeah. Slides are what? Yeah, slides. Tuge. Yeah. And they're all in. No. You don't. No. Yeah. You don't. Ch you there are, of no. course, for F horn, all in. Yeah. But for first walk, just uh, let's say two or three millimeters. Mm -hmm. Second, one millimeter. And third, two centimeters. Okay. Yeah, the third one is always the most. This, for this me. horn. Yeah. This, uh, you know. Yeah. This is Dirk, but the same for Alexander 103. The yeah. same, you know. Can you tell us about your horn? Because there's been some questions about what horn and why Dirk and uh, is this, how did, did you make this model? Uh, I am very happy with uh, Dirk horn, you know, because uh, it's a small company. So, and we collaborate together. I think now they, they, they start a new collaboration with uh, Alessio Allegrini, for example. So they did uh, his, uh, it's not an Allegrini horn, it's just, they call Baborak a model, Allegrini, yeah, because we are involved in the, in the, uh, in the final, you know, so like, uh, I have to try each instrument, so that's the deal, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and the bell, and the pipe, so, we can change, maybe sometimes it's better to find another one for the sound, for the intonation, that's the collaboration. I think it's unique. And the Dual Company is a small one. So uh, if uh, it's absolutely not <laughs> compared with Alexander, Yamaha, Pexman or, or big companies, you know. And uh, yeah, maybe 100% made in Germany. It's <laughs> just the... <laughs> <laughs> Are there Czech models of horns these days? Czech models. Hmm, what did you not, play and what did the old one before? One. What did the yeah, original was, like? Uh, Amati, Amati horn. Mm -hmm. And then famous was Lidl from Brno. Uh -huh. So Green, the second biggest town in Czech. Yeah, yeah but they don't exist. No? no. Yeah. So what did you play on before, like before the Eastern Bloc opened up, before the... the... Before the wall came down, what did they used Some, to play on? Uh, old, uh, you know, Hoyer. Hoyer. Or Kruspe. Right. Kruspe was quite popular in Czech. That was from the East the East Berlin, the yeah. East Germany side. Right. Got it. I never played on a Kruspe, I don't think. I have to try Kruspe one. Kruspe was nice. Kruspe was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Radek, you've been absolutely amazing. Really, there have been so many questions for you and people, it's been quite quiet because people are just, I think, just so amazed to see you on screen. We're so we're so lucky. Um, I hope that if any of you want to, you can donate to, to the fund that Radek set up for freelance musicians. If any of you can post that in the in the chat again, that would be great. Um, so, and then we know that, uh, that Piazzolla is coming up as the next project. Um, and when you can conduct again, who knows? Are you planning uh, this, anything? This year in uh, Marienbad, in Marianne's Gelasne, actually. Yeah. Oh, good. Six months, we have some two overtures, Dvořák Violin Concerto, Mozart number one. And next week, uh, Smetana Festival, what, Beethoven 7. But so, but as a, pro as a concert, as a proper concert. Yeah, a concert, it's a summer festival. You know. Will it be open outside? Air. Ah, open it's air. Open air, up to 200 or 400 uh, people yeah that's fantastic we have a small group of yeah. 35 players and do you have to be will you wear your mask with the zip without mask without mask without Today, mask. first day in my country without mask uh outside just okay. inside the schools or yeah with if anybody mask. if anybody uh if anybody hadn't has only just joined us this is what we were talking about can you see it's you again radic um mm -hmm. your horn playing mask and on your head was the, the 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 bell the thing you had to put on the bell and there you can see where you had to put your it's like in a doctor in an operating room you had to put your hand through there yeah Nin ninja doctor yeah yes this uh yeah <laughs> it's, it's crazy it's just crazy i mean i guess that was the only way you were allowed to do the do the concert exactly. yeah, yeah. But now when you play outside next week for the open air, will you still have to use Without them? mask, without them. Great. Yeah. You see, you see, things have got, things are getting better. Um, Radek, everyone is saying, could we have another horn hangout soon with Radek? I think so. I think we will be after you to get you to do a new one. But I have to let you get back to your family. And um, But what everybody likes to do is they like to take selfies of the horn hangouts. <laughs> so I don't know, do you have your horn there? We can make a nice, a nice horn selfie. You guys ready out there for the horn selfie of the day? So, so there we go with mouthpiece. Okay, ready? One, two, three, Prague. Or what else can we say? How do you say cheers in Czechoslovakian? A uh, seer is a seer. Seer. Oh, that's a good one for a thing. <laughs> I, I will send you. People are very creative. We've had uh, animals, animal selfies mm -hmm. and uh, all sorts of selfies that people take. So I look forward to seeing your selfies. Send them to us. Tag us. Um, it's great that you joined us. I'm mm -hmm. really, really happy to have had Radic on. It's, it's really a, a hero, Radic. You really are for our horn thank world. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was it's a pleasure. Great. And thank you for, for all you've been doing for the horn world and also for your, for your um, Czech uh, yeah. Musicians Fund. I'm sure they're very we grateful. We try to our best. I wish <laughs> everybody all the best. Best regards. Great. See you again. See you soon on the next Horn Hangouts. It'll either be Friday or Monday. Keep a look at it on the website. Bye. Thank you, Radek. Bye. Dankeschön. Mm -hmm.